Hi Mandra Armstrong, welcome to back to this Teardown Lab. Uh, Dyson V8, I think. Can't remember exactly, they've got these numbers. But it's dead, battery's dead and I need to replace it. You can see it's obviously had some damage in its life because there's a crack on this handle, but that shouldn't really affect that. So you can go on Amazon and you can buy a replacement battery. Ooh, fancy, fancy, look, it's got all this stuff in it. It's almost like a complete service kit because it's got filters, screws, everything you'll need. And even books. I'm not going to read those, frankly. Who reads books? So that's good though. That means, of course, you can take off that filter, which really doesn't work anymore. And you've got uh, these filters. I'm not going to clean them. I'm just going to bin them. Mm. I was wondering why this smelt nice. Look, I cleaned this out the other day, um, well, many years ago, but obviously my wife's taken to putting one of those smelly things in it. I was wondering why the house smelts so nice. Right, throw that away. <laughs> we'll keep the filters to the end though. Let's get the battery changed. So the problem you'll find when you're using it with the uh, battery has an issue is that it will just start dying really quickly. And although I'm hitting the trigger there, in use by the time I'm getting to wash a car or something like that it's dying super quick so you want to get that top screw out there put that away and then we want to get these bottom screws god I can't remember how you do this ah <laughs> you want to pop the thing out so this thing dumps all of the uh, detritus everywhere but you want to get rid of those two screws underneath might be a good time to service your cleaner if it's not clean. That's probably why it came with a brush in the kit. Get in there. There, that's it. So the battery is out. So you'll notice it's got this interesting shape here. So if you're looking for one a battery for, for one of these, make sure yours looks the same, basically. So we have the aftermarket battery. You can see it's just a slightly different colour. I don't think that a foot affects the performance in any way it just doesn't say Dyson on the bottom maybe you could crack this open and swap it if you wanted just to do a case swap I don't I'm gonna pop this in there right way around help and there is in there a little tang which is part of the trigger mechanism <laughs> Oop, there you go it's already got the power What's kind of cool with this battery, you'll notice there that the charging jack is actually part of the battery, it's not part of the cleaner. So when you change the battery, you're replacing all of that. So even if your existing one was a bit faulty, after you've done this job, it shouldn't be faulty anymore. And then we pop the other two screws back in. And you're pretty much done at this point. I mean, it's up to you now to decide what else you want to do. But you can see I've got the kit with more items, so I'm going to out while I'm at it. I think the whole thing was, I don't know, £50, something like that. Really quite cheap for what it is. Well, certainly cheaper than what you pay at Dyson. So pop in the new one there. The Filtro. And we'll get our new Filtro here on the back. Then I can suck. Oh yeah, it still sucks. <laughs> and for those curious see how the Dyson battery operates, it's actually got the power switch there and the charging, everything's integrated. I'm wondering what would happen if we put this piece of solder wire onto the battery contacts and then hit that. It's a bit scary. Ooh. Nothing? With that he hulked it out switchy switchy more into one of these and you'd expect huh it's a lot of tech in there so you've got your one two three four five six cells conformal coated pcb in fact mm, it's thick it's almost like a jelly there's your contacts don't let them touch and then your charging wire and your power switch. Groovy. Strange how I'm not seeing any volts when we're flicking that switch. It's crazy. 
Let's see if we can set about getting the cells out of this for fun. I'm just going to remove some of these ancillaries and I've got to be a bit careful. You don't want to short out these wires just because we don't really know what it does and it might activate the battery. Ouch! That was hot. <laughs> but I think it's kind of useful to keep hold of the little micro switch because I might do something with it. I might even uh, reassemble the whole thing. And when you cut stuff off DC jacks, Try to leave a little bit of wire still on them so you know what colour was where, just in case you want to put it back together. That's a top tip for you. So there is an element screwed down. I'm pretty sure that that screwed down part is really, yeah, just holding this PCB onto that board. So it's probably not too critical to worry about at this point. But what is more of a worry is getting off all of these battery connections and they're just under the conformal cane but you can just about get to them you can always peel it back I'll show you that it's quite rubbery look it's just rubbery just bend it back bend it back look at that so you probably could do a repair on this if you could get in there and really knew what you wanted to to change once you were there let's get this scrap wire at it I'm kind of curious at how all this works. There's a nice light guide there. Oh, there are your three charging LEDs, and it's just pushed down these light pipes to the edges of the battery. I'm calling it a battery. Is it a battery pack? I mean, are these the battery and that's the battery pack? Who knows? Of course, be careful if you're using a metal tool like I am on that board because you could be shorting all sorts of stuff. I'm just curious because the PCB looks like it's actually got test points and stuff on it, so it's quite fun. Might look at that later. So let's see how tricky it would be to desolder one of these. Yeah, not too bad. It wants to go. Because it doesn't have room to escape though, that's its main problem. So I'm going to just gently see if I can prise up the PCB. In fact the PCB's held in here. So we'd be better off starting at the front and working our way back to be able to bend it as we go along. Exactly like that. That wasn't too bad at all. Look at this big guy. You might need a beefy soldering iron or a soldering gun for this, but let's see if we can get away with it. Come on. Don't make me have to get the flux out. And you have not actually another option for this big guy here, because you could just cut it, couldn't you? But it's out. That's fine. Let's get to this one here. Good. Just work our way around now. It's got an interesting smell. <laughs> Put it that way. I think it's those interesting coatings melting off. Might have some good spare parts on this PCB. Looks like a couple of MOSFETs on there. And we've got another big guy coming up now. Okay, and that's the last one. You can see I'm just going to pull it out there so it's not locked into the plastic. Oh, <laughs> we're going to be here a while. Oops. Come on. Don't make me have to get the flux out. These little uh, soldering irons are pretty darn good though. I have to say I'm very pleased with its performance. Come on. Come on. Oh, I'm just going to cut it. I'm just going to cut it. They're very tight fit. See, they've clearly where they've been fitted into the holes, they're a bit tight, but you can see there. There's really not too much room to play very much doubt we're going to solder this battery pack back in so that's fine by me so that's good you can bin that if you want let's go a bit further shall we so this interesting little anchor hole here what's that oh that's a thermistor so there was a thermistor there so that's detecting the temperature of the battery pack so it's got some sort of thermal compound there it's thermal silicone 
I should be able to take the lid off this. We have to push these down. Whoa! <laughs> Did I say about metal tools? Be careful. But you do have a lot of these things to get out of the way, so... <laughs> Be very careful. In fact, if we break it... If we, you know, we're not, we're not bothering trying to put this back together. Let's break these out of the way. That gives us two, two less of these things to worry about when we do the other side. Make sure everything's flipped. If you're really worried, by the way, just cut all these. In fact, might as well cut them anyway. I've got less chance of shorting with these things snipped back. Almost like they were designed to be dismantled. God, just think of an electric car. How many of these things are in those? Scary stuff, really. Okay. Let's pull that apart. Then we should be able to remove them. Although we're not going to do it again because these ones are actually trapped like that. Oh, I think I got myself. Ooh. Oh, dearie me. And look, there we are. Dyson. A Dyson brand battery, an INR 20700A. Now, I don't know if these are a standard size, but I'll measure them because I know some of you like to play at home and play with batteries and whatnot. In fact, hang on, this is a standard from a gadget. You can see this is a standard one from a gadget. My ruler's gone magnetic. Right, that is 65 by... 18 and this is 70 by 20. It's quite a bit beefier really. So you probably could use these to replace whatever you're using those for. And let's just double check the voltage on those things. So let's see if there's any power left in one of these standard ones. 3.7 volts I would like to see. <laughs> Not seeing anything, probably dead. Right. 4.1 volts, 4 4.13, 4.15, 4.09, 4.06, 4.1, 4.08. So they're all about the same. No particularly duff cells in that lot. Right. There we go. Hopefully that's been of some sort of use to